Hey guys, welcome back to another Mythic Legions action figure review. Another Poxes series character up for review. Today we're checking out Thrace Wraith Hailer. On the back of the box, we have new artwork featuring the Lich God Poxes, as well as a few small pictures of the characters of this wave and a short paragraph on the lore of Mythic Legions. We have a small picture of Thrace on the side of the package, as well as a short summary on her background. Mythic Legions use collector friendly packaging. They're easy to remove from the boxes and the accessories come in their own tray as well. You don't need to rip or break anything to take them out. The race of the Umengeist are extremely dangerous and elusive. Not many are seen or survive the encounters with them. With only doubtful stories about them providing proof of their existence, many assume these cautionary stories as truth, but no one has ever come back from an encounter to prove them. They are corrupted beings of spirit and flesh. Thrace's search for power has led her to learning the ways of summoning magic, and with her strong connection to the spirit world, making her abilities devastating to her victims. Although that was not enough for the Wraith Hailer, her lust for power, as well as other dark mages, has led them to the Circle of Poxes, where her time spent in the shadows has transformed her into an even more horrific creature of unnatural magical powers. Let's take a look at some of the details. Ashy white skin complemented by pure white hair gives the character a ghostly appearance. Only broken up by the cold stare of her pale blue eyes and the cold purple color of the lips and eyebrows. Large strands of her white hair twist and split towards the sides of her heads, resting on her shoulders and chest. Much more detail of the hair can be seen from the side, with more twisting strands of hair spilling to the front and back of the shoulders. More hair textures are sculpted into the back of the head, with the bright white hair covering up the upper half of the back. A leather corset covers the body of the figure, detailed with tightly wrapped laces down the center, decorated by silver grommets and rivets. The layers of brown leather have a cracked texture effect to them, with the black wash that makes the leather look aged. As usual with Mythic Legion figures, we have large sockets on the back, two of them that will be used for armor later on in the review. The leather corset wraps all the way to the back and is also detailed with the textured leather effect and that black wash. Over at the shoulder, we have the standard knight shoulder plates stacked over each other, with the black paint here having a glittery bronze effect, giving the armor a slight reflective effect. A skin-tight black bodysuit covers the skin on the arms, where the brown leather elven-style gauntlets cover up the forearms, detailed with straps and decorative patterns on the black metal plates. Padded black leather gloves are worn, covering up the hands. A rough textured brown leather belt wraps around the waist with a faded out bronze buckle at the center. Underneath, matching the shoulder armor, we have more of that black style elven armor with even more of that glittery paint applied here, making the symmetrical design pop out as it reflects light. Underneath the belt, we have a dark cloth accessory. Simple and clean, it reaches all the way down to the feet with the only detail in the cloth being the stitching on the edges. Small leather pouches hang from the side of the belt, with two layers of armor stacked over each other protecting the side. A flower pattern is seen running down the center in more of that black glitter paint effect. Underneath the armor, we have another cloth accessory, a large dark skirt that reaches all the way to the ankles with more layers of stitching details at the edges. The leather belt splits into two sections on the back, with only a small plate of armor to cover up the backside. And completely covering up the backside and the legs is that dark skirt that hangs all the way down to the ankles with only stitching at the edges for detail. Taking a look at the thighs, we have the plated armor using a heavy effect of that black glitter paint giving off a bright bronze reflection. More elven style armor completely covers the leg, detailed with a few spiral designs and silver rivets at the center. The brown paint is applied here very lightly, with large sections of armor washed in black paint giving it a worn out appearance. We wrap up the details of the figure with the boots. Small cracked leather boots with sections of the heel and ankle as the only details. Let's take a look at the articulation. Right off the bat, the large hair on the default head will pretty much restrict most range here. As the hair snugly rests on both shoulders and the chest and back, the default head is locked looking forward. We have shoulders that open up and rotate and we notice that the 2.0 bodies do not have bicep rotation. We have elbows that bend inward and rotate, although the armor at the elbow will stop most rotation. Forearms that rotate, wrists that rotate and bend up and down, 
a ball jointed chest that allows rotation and bending all the way around, a joint at the waist that allows rotation. We are wearing a bit of cloth at the legs, so that will stop some of the range of the legs opening up without stretching some of the cloth and armor. While we can move the cloth out of the way, the forward and backward range is pretty much unhindered by the cloth. We have rotation at the thighs, knees that bend back, and have a bit of rotation that's going to be blocked by the sculpt, ankles that rotate and bend up and down, with a foot that twists. As a 2.0 style figure, these bodies are smaller than the normal size 1.0 bulky bodies. As they are modular, they will fit with other 2.0 style bodies. You can swap the limbs and accessories with each other. Here we can see just how much larger the 1.0 bodies and limbs are. Cosmic Legions having 2.0 style bodies as well means that you can swap between these two series, but they are also incompatible with the 1.0 style bodies. Comparing the height next to a more standard 6 inch figure, Hasbro figures are just a tad shorter, showing off how 4 horsemen runs on the larger side of the 6 inch scale. Jada Toys runs their 6 inch figures on the shorter side, just showcasing the great difference between the scales in the 6 inch form. And since we're reviewing Undead Purple Women, we have Neca Sylvanas, who is sculpted in their own 7 inch scale. And finally, another 7 inch scale, McFarlane's human sized figures are a pretty good match for Mythic Legions. Until you start to bring out the larger figures in that scale. For the accessories, we have an alternate head, similar to the original but with much less hair, especially at the back, intended to use with the cloth hood. Swapping out the heads is just as easy as all the other figures. You simply remove the original and then socket the alternate head until it pops in. Unlike the default head, the alternate head allows much better articulation of the neck, allowing you to get much more range. With the same ashen colored skin and white hair and neutral expression, the only difference is the slimmer size, with the hair on the back being removed and much less hair flow on the sides. Included inside the plastic bag, we have a dark purple cloth hooded robe made of a reflective material. It has a section at the top attached as the hood, as well as metal wires built into the edges of the cloth for better posing. Installing the robe is a simple process. You just need to remove the head and slide it over the neck joint. The original head sculpt was designed to have hair flowing everywhere, so the hood will get in the way. That's where the alternate head comes into play, fitting perfectly into the hood. Styling the cloth robe gives the figure a much larger and impressive presence, making a great mix between plastic and cloth. We get a pair of elven style shoulders in that same glittery black paint. You might have a bit of a space issue when installing them with the default hair equipped, as it will get in the way of the armor. Removing the head is going to be your best option for installation. Afterwards, you can socket the armor into the pegs into the back. Due to the size of the hair, it will restrict any range the shoulders had of opening up and down. This seems to be the issue as well, even with the alternate short hair. We get a few pair of hands, starting with the default gripping hands, with these bending up and down, and another pair of hands in the open palm casting position. Just like most Mythic Legion joints, you can simply pull off the hands, and then socket in the alternates. Just make sure to warm up the sockets for an easier time replacing them. We have a gunmetal grey and bronze staff with the blue orb at the top. The staff top is removable to swap out with other toppers. A blue clear screaming magical skull effect with the spiral tail. Installing the skull effect is just a matter of being able to attach it to the arm and have it balance in place. A very large clear magical snake effect and that same blue spirit color. The snake effect can be installed into the staff, wrapping around the entire shaft, giving it an impressive effect. An excellent combination of both plastic and cloth, Thrace Wraith Hailer is a prime example of what sort of unique looks Four Horsemen can pull off when they combine effects. With both an amazing sculpt and painted details, the cloth on this character complements the theme of a spirit summoner, especially with those great transparent effects that still have a great amount of detail into the sculpt. 
The included hooded robe and its ease of use makes this figure feel that much more premium in quality and gives us more ways to pose and display the figure. Thrace is an excellent introduction to the cloth accessories of Mythic Legions. Being able to bend the robe or wear the hood on or off with the different head sculpts gives so much value to the posing of this figure. The transparent effects are some of the best accessories I've seen yet from Mythic Legions. These did not feel brittle at all and the clear plastic was still able to show off the detail in the trails, sculpting and even the small effects like the scales on the head of the snake. The included robe feels very high quality as well and has a clean soft feeling microfiber style texture to it that reflects light very well for your display. I appreciate the alternate head, even if its only use was to use while the hood was being worn. My only small complaint is that they were almost identical. It feels like a wasted opportunity to have two neutral expressions. But I guess Four Horsemen's thought was to have the iconic look of the character in either option of wearing the hood or not. An amazing figure that really blends the cloth and plastic very well together, Thrace Wraith Hailer is a great pickup for those wanting to check out what the cloth goods are all about. The clear effects are some of the nicest effects I've had in collecting toys from any toy line, and I can't wait to see what other crazy effects Four Horsemen will cook up. In a wave of spellcasters, witchers, and summoners, Thrace fits in very well with the evil spellcaster look, and nails the spirit world theme with the mysterious look of a hooded cloak and dark armor. Compared to my Arizak review, you can clearly see the love this figure had with both a painted body and cloth goods that cover up the entire body. The posing value is here, both robed and unrobed. She's definitely worth picking up and will fit in perfectly with your fantasy collection. You do not want to miss out on this evil spellcasting sorcerer. Alright guys, that's it for this review. Leave a comment letting me know how you like this figure, subscribe or share this video with your friends to help out the channel.